So in this video, we're going to talk about internal reliability and what that might look like in SPSS. So we'll be covering um, how to calculate the best alpha. When you're referring to um, internal reliability, most often you're referring to the value of Cronbach's alpha. And so we're going to be talking about um, kind of what that might mean, what that value means, where you want that value to be, um, how to calculate it collectively for each scale, and how to calculate it um, individually for each item, and um, some of the different functions I'll be showing you in SPSS will show you specifically um, how to look at each item and what the data would look like if you excluded the item and things of that nature. Um, before I show you how to do anything though, let me just do some basics. Um, first, the definition of internal reliability is just a measure based on the correlations between different items on the same test. So it measures whether or not those several items that propose to measure the same general construct actually produce similar scores. So I'll be showing you a couple of different scenarios in which um, the alpha is a really good level and um, some situations where it's not so great and why that might be. Um, when you're referring to alpha, you typically want your alpha level to be like 0.7 or 0.8. In this video, I'm working under the assumption that I want it to be at least 0.8. Um, also, you need at least three um, items to make a complete scale. So keep that in mind as you're going through and you're doing this. You can't really calculate that or um, you can't really have a complete scale if you have less than three items. So yeah, those are some of the basics with internal reliability. And um, I'll also explain to you a little bit about this data set that we're working with, some of the variables. They're really just kind of letters and numbers. So I'll explain the ones that we'll work with. Um, the SLB variable stands for school liking and belonging. FPC is female jealousy. Um, we'll also be looking at this IPIP. It's a, pretty much it's just like a personality inventory. And um, I won't really be showing you anything with reliability for this measure of self-esteem, but I will talk about that variable a little bit later on. So this data was collected um, from junior high students and um, it allows us pretty much to just see like what they're experiencing as they're transitioning into middle school um, and the kind of experiences they are having in middle school. So, you know, do they feel like they belong? Um, do they have any kind of relational aggression? Things of that nature, it's different personality traits. They're just kind of trying to take all things into account when assessing these um, junior high students. So first, I'm going to show you how to determine the scale mean of a variable. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to transform, compute variable, um, and you'll see that when this window pops up, it's not the variable names. Instead, it's the variable labels. And in the intro to SPSS video that I made, I talked about how the label can be anything you want. It can be really long. Um, in this particular data set, the variable label is the actual item on the inventory. So it's each question. Um, that's a little overwhelming to me, and it makes it a little bit harder for me to see what variables I'm selecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and a little box will pop up and right now it says display variable labels and I'm just going to click it and switch it to variable names which makes it a little bit easier for me to see. It's a little bit less overwhelming. So for this to calculate the um, scale mean make sure you type in what you want your target variable or the new variable name because you're 
creating a new variable. When you complete this function in SPSS, a new variable will pop up at the end of your data set, which I will show you. So make sure you name it something that is accurate and um, kind of descriptive of what you're wanting. So let's say I want the scale mean of um, the scores of female jealousy. So since this is a variable name, ooh, I can't really type today, can I? Since this is a variable name, there can't be any spaces, so on. So I'm going to name it female jealousy. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of these items from FPC 1 to 10. Now you can click all of them and move all of them over individually. That would work. Um, so we're just going to, you know, do that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Make sure you're actually doing this in the correct order. It's not going to work. All right, so I'm just going to move all of these over. All right, so now that I've done all of that, since we're doing the mean, we're going to want to add them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and click all, and then I'm going to scroll in this box. You'll see that when you click all, it gives you quite a few options. I just want the mean. And when you click on whatever function that you're wanting it to compute, it'll give you an explanation of what you're actually doing. So that's helpful. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And it went ahead and computed the scale mean for female jealousy. And you can see that in this column over here. All right. Um, I'm showing you that to show you that there's also another way to compute um, a scale mean um, when we're actually computing the reliability measures for each item. So. First, we're going to run a reliability analysis. So you're going to want to go to Analyze, and then Scale, Reliability Analysis. And again, when this window pops up, it shows you all of the um, variable labels, which I don't want in this case. They will come in handy later, but I don't want them right now. And again, we're going to focus on female jealousy. And instead of moving all of these things over one by one, what you can do is click the top one. And then when you go to click the bottom one, just hold down shift and click it and it'll select all of the ones in between. And you just go ahead and move it over, but I think I forgot one. So let me make sure. Maybe I did. Oh yes, there it is. Okay. So I've moved all of them over. And it really is pretty simple. Make sure you have selected that you do want alpha. And I'm just going to click OK. And in this output window, it shows me the overall Cronbach's alpha of all of the 10 items in the scale that measures female jealousy. And this alpha level is really very great. So there's not really a whole lot we have to do here. Um, but I will show you how to get the the alpha level of the scale if we were to delete some of the items. And I'll show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. So go back to reliability analysis. I'm going to leave everything here like it was just a second ago. But instead, I'm just going to click statistics. And if you select this box right here that says scale if item deleted, and hit continue, and then hit OK, instead of just showing you the overall reliability, it'll show you what the reliability would look like if you were to delete each and every single one of these items. And it shows you in detail, like it shows you the variable label. We talked about that as well in the intro to SPSS video, that the variable label is what shows up in the output instead of the variable name. 
So this will also come in handy when we're looking at a scale that isn't really reliable, that doesn't really measure what it says it's going to measure. Um, so yeah, it just shows you the entire item itself and what the alpha would be if you were to delete that. And I'm looking through and it doesn't really appear that by deleting any of these, it would help our alpha. It would actually hurt the alpha level if we deleted some of these. So that just shows that this is a good measure. So, um, yeah, a good measure is really just one that measures what it says it's going to measure and that it measuring um, similar constructs and giving you similar scores for each one. And I will show you what it looks like when they don't measure what they say they are going to do. So we're going to take a look at something that isn't quite the alpha that we want. So we're going to go back to analyze um, reliability analysis. And I'm just going to move all of these back over. I don't want them anymore. Instead, we're going to look at school liking and belonging. All right, make sure that it's still selected to scale the item if you delete it. Still alpha, and we're gonna click okay. All right, so in this case, um, by some standards, this alpha is actually acceptable. It's between 0.7 and 0.8. Um, but I'm just going to work under the assumption that I want it to be at least 0.8, that anything less than that is unacceptable. So I'm going to scroll through these items and I'm going to see if by deleting any of these, it would improve the alpha. And so I see that item eight, I believe, says below is a list of statements that describe how some students feel about school. Um, sometimes I wish I could stay home from school. And so according to this table, this item doesn't really fit with the rest of what the rest of the items are measuring. Um, the, rest, the rest of these items are asking things like, I like school, or I feel close to people at school, I feel respected, I feel like I, feel like I belong. Um, but this item, sometimes I wish I could stay home from school. Um, one reason that this might not be a good measure, one reason that this might be impacting alpha in a negative way is that um, you don't always want to stay home from school because you don't like school or because you don't belong. Sometimes you wish you could stay home from school because you want to play video games all day or you maybe you don't feel good so you just don't want to go to school. Um, there are so many different reasons that you might want to stay home from school as a junior high school student that don't always relate to feeling like you belong at school. So that is one reason that this could potentially be affecting alpha. It's not really measuring all of the same things. So I'm gonna show you how to analyze the reliability for this measure um, after deleting that particular item. So you're just gonna go back and you're gonna move the item that you don't want anymore back over. Just click OK again, and it'll show you now that alpha is 0.848. So it's gone up quite a bit, um, and you still have at least three items. You have eight items in this case. So this is showing that this measure overall is a pretty good measure of school liking and belonging. It was just that one item that may or may not be beneficial. Finally, I'm going to show you um, a measure that is not the greatest. So I'm going to go back to reliability analysis and I'm going to select all of these things and I'm going to move them back over and I'm going to scroll down to these IPIP measures. Oh, I did it wrong. Oops. There we go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. The Cronbax Alpha for this measure is 0.475. That is nowhere near what we want it or need it to be. So according to this output, 
this is not a very reliable measure. This isn't really measuring what it says it's going to, and these items really aren't working cohesively to all measure similar constructs and give you similar scores. It really is kind of a sad alpha. So we're going to take a look at this alpha. So it's 0.475 that we're looking to beat. So I'm just gonna scroll through and I'm gonna see if by deleting some of these, I can improve. Now you'll see that um, some of these, you know, will do a lot of good if I delete them. So let's start with the closest one, 0.483. And that is item five, item five. So, I'm going to go back to reliability analysis and I'm going to move item 5 back over and see what happens. Alright, so it went up just a little. Now I see that item, I believe that's item 6. Yes, because we just deleted 5. So I'm going to go back through, move item 6 back over. So it's, it's going up slowly but surely. Now I'm going to get rid of item 4. Hmm. And then I'm going to get rid of the last item. I'm just kind of showing you this. Um, so, so you have a feel of what this might look like. Um, so let's see, the next item that we're going to get rid of is item 7. Alright, so it's, it's, it's inching up there. It's, we're getting somewhere. So it's, it's slowly increasing to be a little bit closer to the alpha that we are wanting. All right, 0.698. There's one more that we can delete that will increase alpha. And that is the very first one. All right. So we've whittled it down. We started with 12 items and we have removed eight of them from this reliability statistics analysis. And so now we have an alpha of 0.76, which by some standards is an acceptable alpha. That is pretty good. But like I said, I'm working under the assumption that I want at least 0.8, um, which really is kind of like the best alpha level that you want at least. So let's take a look at these items individually and see why these ones made the cut, why these ones are still items that are in this, and why by removing them, it would actually cause alpha to decrease. So these are asking things, I sympathize with other feelings, I have frequent mood swings, I feel others' emotions, I get upset easily. Now you look at these four questions and you see they're all kind of assessing um, emotions to some degree. So that is why in this particular case, the alpha is highest for these four items because you can see that these four items are measuring something similar. Um, it's assessing specifically the emotions of these junior high students. And if you go back in and look at specifically what some of the other items were, you might see that those don't really line up with emotions, which might be why the reliability for this particular measure was low. So this just kind of implies that um, they're not all measuring the same thing. So um, yeah, that's kind of what a good measure versus a bad measure would look like. A good measure, so like the first measure we looked at, the measure of female jealousy, the alpha was really high and you could see that it was high because each item was asking something similar. Um, but you can see in this last item, that this last measure that we've looked at, that it wasn't quite the case. 
So there is one more thing that I want to show you how to do before we move on to the next video. Um, it's about reverse coding. So you might have noticed um, if you had paused and looked at some of the items specifically in the IPIP um, scale, that some of them were worded, you know, I have mood swings frequently, or I am interested in people around me or the emotions of people around me. Um, when something is reverse coded, it's asking something that is kind of the opposite. So instead of saying, I am interested in the emotions of others around me, it would say, I am not interested. And so they would be reverse coded. And so you'll see that some of the variables in this data set have the letter R next to them. And that just means that they have been reverse coded. And I am going to show you how to undo that if it is necessary for you to do. So first, if I can remember how to do this, recode into same variables. You'll find that under the transform window. Again, you'll see the variable labels. I don't want those. I want variable names. And we're going to look at the RSE because that's the measure of self-esteem. And you'll see quite a few of them have the letter R. So I'm just going to move them over one by one. And I'm just moving over the ones that have already been reverse coded because I'm going to show you how to undo them. You're going to want to click old and new values because you're going to want to type in what the old values were and what you want them to be now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But before I do, um, you want to know what the values are now. I tried to do this earlier without looking at it and I had no idea what the values were or how to get started. So you right click on the box, a little thing will pop up and you click variable information and it will come up with the label, which is wonderful because it shows you the item specifically and what the item is and what it's measuring. And it will also, also show you the value labels. So in this case, um, it is strongly disagree is one and four is strongly agree. So keep in mind that these ones are already reverse coded. So I'm going to show you how to undo that. I just wanted to look at that because I wanted to see, you know, what the values were. I didn't know if it was one through four, one through seven, you know. Um, and I wanted to understand, I guess, what we were kind of dealing with. So the old value, we're going to type that in, new value, add. So you're pretty much just going to do this. It's supposed to be two until they're going in reverse order. So you'll see on the left hand column it goes one through four, and on the right hand column it goes four through one. And you're just going to click continue and click OK. And it's not going to pop up like an output window, but it will tell you that it has executed what you told it to do. So now you know how to compute the scale mean, how to do a reliability analysis, and how to undo reverse coding because that might be important when you're doing reliability analysis on your measures. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, so yes, I just wanted to introduce you to reliability, something that is really important in statistics that we have not talked about yet, but is a good precursor to reliability is factor analysis. Um, typically speaking, you're going to want to run factor analysis before you test for reliability. And factor analysis um, pretty much just shows you, I guess, the correlations between the different um, items and the different factors and it shows you you know if they're good factors and if they're measuring the same thing and um, things like that and so you're going to want to run factor analysis before you do your reliability analysis but we will cover that a little bit later on